Hello everyone, it is Justin here from Lag Free Network, Lag Free Gaming, whatever you'd like to call us. It's time for the next episode of the Be A GM Mode for the Columbus Blue Jackets. And because I've had quite a few people suggest it, we are going to take on the Pittsburgh Penguins. So here's the deal. I'm going to go ahead and simulate up to this game. We're going to play the Pittsburgh Penguins, and then after that... Depending on time, I will decide whether I want to explore the trade deadline or not. If not, I'll do a special episode on it or I will start the next episode with it. But most likely, I'm going to try to get the trade deadline over with today. That way, we you know, won't have to worry about it, basically. So, I will go ahead and simulate up to this Pittsburgh game so everyone can see me play against Sidney Crosby and Evgeny Malkin. Because, I mean, come on. Everyone loves it, right? Even though, you know, we, we did have them in dire straits last year in the playoffs. They still ended up beating us and they went on to do something special. So, ah, oh, man, come on. Separated sh shoulder. I can't speak. Separated shoulder for Brandon Dubinsky. Um, he doesn't come back till April. That's not good. So, basically, playoff time. If we make the playoffs, that is. Alright, I am back. Uh, sorry about that. <laughs> I, I always hope that we don't get an injury so that it doesn't stop the uh, simulation. But hey, it happens. You know what? It's, it is what it is. We'll get over it. So we have two straight lo losses there. Matthew Corrente is on the waivers. But uh, I'm not really looking for him right now. 73 overall isn't really going to be much help to us. Plus, I don't really see him having a whole lot of potential going forward. So there's no reason to even try to bury him in our uh, AHL system so all right so we're ready to play this uh, old good old Schittsburg team right I will uh, go ahead and simulate or I'll basically move you forward until the puck drop and I'll see you then called the great steel city their arena is made of plenty of that and their team has proved just as strong. The city is Pittsburgh. The team is the Penguins. Hi, everybody. Along with Eddie Olchek, Mike Emmerich. Face-off about to begin. What are you thinking? Looking at especially team stock, and I'm going to look at the penalty kill. A team that has a real strong unit while shorthanded. Let's look at the starting netminders. Grice is the starter in goal this evening for the Penguins. You notice the winning percentage. He said before the game he wants to be better and that the coach was right for choosing him tonight. Sergei Bobrovsky from Russia, a first All-Star and winner of the Vezina Trophy in 2012, mainstay goalie for Columbus and the Russian Olympic team. Important, and he starts this one. All right, everyone, I am back. It is time to start the game. Johansson and Crosby taking the face off. Let's see what happens. And he loses it. That's all right, though. All right, let's go, Evander. Ah. Shoot. Thought I thought could get that down there. <clears throat> so, uh, what I did do is I decided to switch Brandon Gibbons and actually bring up Michael Chapu to the uh, to the big roster. Since we have that open spot that Dubinsky left by being injured, I figured we might as well give Chapu a shot, just like they did in the real in real life, and see what he can do. Because I mean. He is quite a, a damn good player when it comes to a third and fourth line type guy. And uh, and I think that he can really help our team as well. Lino. Hartnell. Hartnell. Alright, keeping the pressure on him early there. As you can see, they, they have Thomas Grice in goal, so... That could either mean a good or bad thing for us because, oh, sorry about that. He's a little streaky overall, whether it's, you know, in real life or on the game. 
he's a streaky goalie. He can put up, you know, really, really good numbers at times. And other times, he just he, he lets everything in practically. But at the same time, I mean, you can almost say the same thing about Marc-Andre Fleury. The only difference is, is that Marc-Andre Fleury is good more than he is bad, at least in my opinion. So, we'll see what happens here. Good. Calvert, get some speed through the neutral zone. Ah, he's gonna about to take that shot. Try to go top corner there with Cammy. Wow, how did that get through? <laughs> Bo Bennett with the goal, snipe City on Bobrovsky off the one timer. Thought that we had Malkin pushed to the side enough, but apparently not. We're both sitting on that pass, and b both of us couldn't stop it from getting through. Went straight to Bennett, who was wide open in the slot, which is not where you want to leave that guy. He may not have been having a very good season in real life so far, because he is on my fantasy team, but he's also been injured for most of it, so that could explain most of it, you know? Let's get the second line out here, see if they can get us some uh, energy back here. Felt like we've done a pretty good job overall of just, you know, trying to to get pressure on them all right good save good save well Murray <clears throat> Felino Jenner oh so apparently it looks like Cardinal got hit in the face with that shot there good save Wiz, Phil Felino. Picks it up in his own end. Chip just falling on side. Good hit. Pass, save. Good save. What the heck? So I don't know why they didn't go right to the guy. Chop it like it's hot. Shapu. Ah, almost got that up the trap. Big hit. Let's go, Shapu. Michael Shapu. Good shot, good shot, good shot. I'll take it. So, in uh, the real NHL, I'll just keep on saying that, I guess. Um, the Blue Jackets are streaking. Anyone see that? They've won three straight, and they beat, you know, the best team in the Eastern Conference by record, at least, the Tampa Bay Lightning. So that's that's a pretty damn good win, if I do say so myself. Um, you know, whether or not, wow, just gets through. Um, but at the same time, you know, we're still down in a hole, that's for sure. A hole that we made for ourselves. Oh, Horton. How did you miss that? Come on. <laughs> Johansson. Ah, oh. oh, come on. Um, but yeah, I mean, you know, the team overall has looked better in at least two of the games. Wow. Holy Mata. He's getting aggressive out there. Oh, that I might better get him back in there. Um, I mean, the, sh the game that Bobrovsky made 52 saves, obviously that's not a great effort by our team. However, you know, a lot of those shots were shots where, you know, you kind of expect him to make those saves at least. They're, you know, shots from the outside, something just to get somewhat of a rebound from him. So, you know, obviously not all of them were like grade A scoring chances, but... You know, all of them never are great A scoring chances. So, Bobrovsky had a great week, though. I think he just uh, got announced today that he's the second star of the week for the NHL, which is pretty pretty good honors. He was uh, three and zero and had like a 9.56 save percentage. Of course, 52 saves really helps that as well. All right, let's take a look at the stats here. One nothing for Pittsburgh. We have the same amount of shots. They're out hitting us at the moment. We have more time to attack. Passing's close. 
and they've won one more face off. There wasn't a whole lot going on in that period. There's a lot of back and forth, but not a whole lot of great opportunities. Let's see what'll happen here in the second period. <clears throat> Let's see here. All right, but uh, what I was saying was, you know, that's the type of Bobrovsky that we need. We not we don't need the Bobrovsky who lets in three goals on 18 shots, you know, and that's. That's been something that's plagued him at times. I feel like when he has more shots on him, he feels better in net and he's able to make better saves. But when he doesn't have as many shots on him, that's when he seems to struggle a little more. Of course, I think someone like Jonas Hiller is a lot the same, which is why he's having a pretty good season in... Ah, uh, come on. Just straight up beats him. Um... That's why I think Jonas Hiller is doing so well in Calgary is because Calgary isn't exactly known for having the greatest defense. They're not exactly known for having the best scoring. However, Jonas Hiller gets to see a lot of the puck. And because of that, I think he, he's better in the end. I mean, who remembers in the Olympics, you know, not this last one, but the one before that, where he basically was, you know, the only reason that the Swiss team was close to Canada in that one game was because of Jonas Hiller. He was holding him in there. I think the game was like 2-1, to one or it was it was a lower score, but like any other goalie would have just let in a crap ton of goals because they were just being completely outplayed. Completely. Oh, good try, good try. Whoop. Did the old flyby. Ooh. Go Felino. Um But yeah, I, th I think that's just the type of goalie that Bob is. Because he needs to see the puck quite often. Otherwise, he's just not as effective. Alright. Way to draw a penalty. Way to draw a penalty. We gotta, we gotta get a goal back here. Get some momentum back. I feel like we've, we've held the puck a lot more than they have. They just have, you know, they've scored two of their goals or two of their shots, and we haven't been able to beat Grice yet. But this time, I think we're going to get a good opportunity out of this, hopefully. Let's see here. Just win the face off. That'd be a good help. All right. Good job. Wow, really? Horton. Damn it. I don't know why Wisniewski was right there instead of where he should be. Really, guys? Alright. Off a stick and out. I Kane. Kane's carrying it through center. Drill. Oh. Center I feel, felt we needed to get a shot there, just something. So far we've so right there we have everyone coming backwards. No one going forwards. Ah, oh, come on. How do you how do you not grab that? Really? Come on, Jack. He's in front with it. Ah. <clears throat> Thought I could get that through, which it did get through. It just went off the stick. Let's go, Kane. It's an onside play. Offensive zone pick up by Johansson. Wonderful centering pass and it's right to him. Really? To Bennett. Apparently the stick lift doesn't do enough. <laughs> that one comes right on his stick. Not very long, but good. Into the end of attack. And front. Marvelous save. No time on that one. To Hartnell. Little pass that can start some progress ahead. Big hit there the at the blue line. On that one to Crosby. Broke it up well with the poke check. Erickson, let's go, Hartnell. 
on his stick on the centering pass. Really? <laughs> Man, we're, we're just so discombobulated right now out there. It's ridiculous. It really is. Hi, Felino. Letestu. Oh, come on. Really? How'd you miss that? Good job, Letestu. Cammy. Calvert. What a what a save. We're right across the crease. Couldn't score it. Really? What a save by Bobrovsky. Don't know how I didn't just stop that freaking pass, but whatever. Oh, come on. Shapu. Oh. Who <laughs> ran over the goalie there at the end? <laughs> Man, like, the team is just so scattered right now. Like, you, you could see so many of those passes just weren't making it to the guy. Like, no one could control the puck. You know, everything was just going wrong there. We, we really desperately need a goal here on this power play to try to at least, you know, get some of this momentum back. Ah. All right, good opportunity. I was able to walk. Whoa. I was able to walk right into the slot there and get a good shot on. Usually Johansson can snipe something like that, but that's all right. Still a good opportunity. Let's keep that uh, first line. Well, we'll do second line defense, but let's keep that, that first line out there when it comes to the forwards. We only have 31 seconds. I think they can do that. Good clean win. Oh, good opportunity. Oh, yeah, there it is. Nathan Horton. What a shot. That's what we needed to do right there. Get, get the passing going. Move it around a little bit. Finally open it up to where it was two on one down low. And once that was the case, all we had to do was make that one pass. And boom, it's in the back of the net. Snipe show by Nathan Horton. That should get us a little bit of uh, momentum going into the third period here. As long as we don't give him one back right before the uh, whistle, we should be good. So, uh, hell yeah. That's what I'm talking about right there. That's that's why we have Nathan Horton on this team, to score goals like that. That's for sure. All right. Let's see here. Keep him, keep him outside. All right. That's all right. Okay, we got we got that one goal that we needed to get back into the game a little bit. It's only a one goal game. They're still winning, and I still don't know if I trust Bobrovsky completely with just stopping straight up shots like that. However, he did make a few really big saves that period, and for that I appreciate it. I uh, I still, when it comes to trade deadline, I'm still looking somewhat for a good backup goaltender who's better than McElhaney. Someone I can turn to in case Bobrovsky's having some rough games. Um, we'll see if I can get another good goalie for that, though. Let's take a look at the stats. 2-1 to one, uh, Pittsburgh over the CBJ. We have four more shots. They have six more hits. We have three more minutes of time on attack. And our passing is still close. We've had two power plays. And we've won more, one more faceoff. One, one more faceoff. That's hard to say. All right, let's get into the third period here. Let's try to get this game tied up and then take the lead so we can beat the Pittsburgh Penguins and send Crosby home crying. Let's get this started right here, Johansson. Come on. 
Yeah, I missed that. Whoop. All right. Go Horton. Moves up along the board. Chip to Kane. Oh, Ooh. another save. Good opportunity there, but by, by Evander. Picked up in the attacking zone by Horton. Wow, he just got straight up out out skated there. Taken over by Airhawk. Gets in. What'll he do? Played in the corner by Hornquist. He can start some really? danger here. Shot. Up the wing. A good deep there. Big wow, what a hit. If you're looking for Don't know how hit, you he, of all people, made that hit. Because exactly freaking Latang is afraid of touching push. anyone. But whatever. The Blue Jackets will start from their own end. To Go Hardnell. Got on by with that one. Could not be filtered through a strong play by Evgeny Malkin. Play to be made now by Mark. Moves to the corner. Ah. By Dupuis. To Malkin. Shook right through. Great job. Slips on by. Carried to the corner boards by Malkin. Wow. He's got his second. Beats him five hole. Just like that. And we can't get the puck off of Malkin. He controls it, he controls it, he controls it, and then hits Bo Bennett in the slot. Nothing you can do about it. I said I'd poke the puck off his stick, he picks it back up, passes it to the middle. Guy isn't being covered as well as he could be. And then he just beats Bobrovsky with a softy goal right through the five hole. It's a shame that, you know, on this game sometimes it's like that. But hey, you know what? It is what it is. It's the computer shooting, so they got to make it... They gotta make it as fair as possible because no matter what, if you're a decent NHL player at all, as like an actual person, um, you will outshoot. Ah, oh, good opportunity. Oh, come on, get the puck. I say exactly, you know why. Testu, Atkinson. Right up the middle to Downey. And offside is called on the play. Alright. We need two goals quick here. Or at least one goal quick and then go from there. The Blue Jackets have played very well, but they've just had no finish to their opportunity, whether it's been a post, a crossbar, or the several times. Very true. Ray, I don't know if you believe in omens or not. We are missing the net a lot. Just like Ray Ferrer said. So Come on, guys. I don't know if this is the greatest time to have the fourth line out there, but they should they should only be out there for a short time if they are. That's the bird. Bowler. Shapu. Ah, bowl! Come on! How do you miss that? Just like real life. Anytime he gets a good opportunity, he usually misses the net or can't control the puck or whatever else because he's a goon, basically. He has his role, that's for sure. Shapu. Ah, that's alright. You know what, the whistle is a good thing, actually. That way we can actually get a decent line out there. They're a fan of Thomas Grace's play. Not so much of Bobrovsky's, though. I mean, even the goal that we did beat him, it wasn't exactly the greatest goal. I mean, it, it, it beat him, you know, short side, but the goalie had to make quite a save if he was going to make that save, so. Ah. Really? Wiz? How do you lose that? Wow. Really? Alright, screw you, Crosby. Just picking up everything, even if he's not even there. 
to Horton. To Horton. Oh, here's a wrister. All right. I don't know what the holdup is with everyone else. I guess it's just the team doesn't break out very well. No one's going forward when I'm trying to go forward up the ice. Everyone's behind me, and I even stopped and waited for people to, to join me in the in the uh, zone there. So <clears throat> it's just frustrating so far. The team's just not there tonight. They don't have quite the energy that they usually have. Really? <laughs> Hook it right to him. Alright. Let's see here. A little past five minutes still to go in the third. The Penguins just widened their lead. It's now two. Scooped up by Downey. See, they're just Pack and front. Man. That's two unanswered goals. They just picked it right up. And said. Anytime there's a 50-50 puck for the most part on this game, the computer will pick it up about 80% of the time at least. It's just frustrating because, I mean, I have the puck. I lose the puck. The puck gets loose. I think I'm going to grab it, and then I can't. And then that happens. Just a broken play. Defenseman was out of his position at the blue line, and he never recovered to get the guy who was wide open. Nick Spalling there for the goal. Let's see here. They win the draw and will now set up an attack. Test two. 13, the shift from He's sitting on it. And it's just there, just like that. Had it have been the computer, I, I probably would have, you know, picked up the puck after that happened. But because I'm, I'm the, the player, it didn't happen that way. Come on. So, um, what does everyone think of the uh, the whole All Star Game vote thing going on right now, with uh, Zimgus Skurgeons being the leader? No one is in position. Not gonna score three goals in a minute. No matter how good or bad I could be at this game, I'm not. I'm not scoring three goals in a minute. That's for sure. We, the team lost this game when they came out with the effort that they're putting because if you look at the players in general, a lot of these guys feel really slow right now. Like, they don't have the momentum. There's a little bit of ice tilt going on. They're just not quite as, as into it as they usually are, you know? The pucks are bouncing off of our sticks rather than allowing us to... Um, rather than allowing us to control the pucks and everything, I mean... Come here. <laughs> we were just dancing. Crosby and frickin' uh, Johansson there. But yeah, it just, it just feels like the team just wasn't quite there tonight. And I mean, obviously, Bobrovsky might have, you know, 20 shots on goal this game and four goals against. That's I don't care how good of the chances are, that's unacceptable. Plain and simple. Wow, see? I'm stuck on the goalie. Ah, oh, Kane. How do you not score that, bro? Dump it out. Get that puck out. A very poor performance for the team today. That's that's okay though. It happens. I think we're still ahead of Pittsburgh in the standings, but only by like maybe a win or two. Not not by a lot. <clears throat> we were only able to get that one goal this game, and you know Bobrovsky had another not so great game. But it is what it is. We're still looking decent for a a uh, playoff appearance. If we can get some good wins together here towards the end of the season, we'll be in pretty good shape. 
As you can see, 4 to 1 is the final score. We had 18 shots, they had 15. So 15 shots, 4 goals, not too good. They out hit us by 6, which is never a good thing. That's not usual. Um, time on attack, as usual, we were above them by 3 minutes or so. Um, passing, they were beating us on a good amount because a lot of ours were being broken up. And uh, we had two power plays. We had two less face-off wins and a breakaway, but that is, really doesn't matter. Let's take a look at the box score here. You can see the breakdown of the goals. We'll take a look at the player stats here. Bo Bennett with two goals. It's a big game, as well as Malkin with his two assists. We'll take a look at the goalies here. Grice had a 944 save percentage, a very good game for him. Um, we'll take a look at the away stats for us. Cam Atkinson's a minus two, not so good. Hartnell's a minus two. Not so good. A minus three by Jack Johnson and a minus three by Feder Tutin. Definitely not what we're looking for by those two guys as being our top defensive pairing. Borowski, 733 save percentage. Not good at all. So let's take a look at the three stars. Bo Bennett, Chris Letang, and Vianney Malkin. Time to go back to the hub. To clear my throat there it's getting a little little bad <laughs> whoo <clears throat> damn <laughs> can't get it cleared up <laughs> all right so um, what I'll do now is get everything ready for the trade deadline and uh, I will be I will cut to when I'm it's time to do some trades all right I'll be right back all right it is Justin here right back with the trade deadline um, any of the trades that we're looking to make um, there was some people who did mention some players that we could go after however when it comes to those players they're all a little bit too expensive for what we would look to give up because as you can see by looking at our team here we don't have a ton of guys who are worth a lot obviously Jack Johnson, Evander Kane, Ryan Johansson guys who I don't really want to move they do have some good value Ryan Murray has some good value but he also could be an elite defenseman um, Wisniewski has some good value, Dubinsky until he got injured which makes him not able to be traded we have some guys here who can fetch some value, but, you know, when someone says, hey, let's go for, say, um, <clears throat> Patrice Bergeron, for example, because someone did mention that, um, his trade value is a little much, you know, it'd be really hard to get a 91 overall 29-year-old player who has that much trade value. Someone did mention Brad Marchand, though, and that that's a possibility. Um, the only thing is right now, <clears throat> he would fit in on the top six as the left wing. But I'm pretty happy with my two left wingers at the moment with Hartnell and Evander Kane. While Marchand is the right type of player, I'm not sure if I want to make that trade or not. Um, if I could make that trade, we'll just take a look at something here. <clears throat> Man, the throat will not clear. Um... We'll just take a look at two guys who are basically be in the same spot. We have Hartnell and Marchand. Um, Hartnell makes more, and he's older, and he has more years on it. So it would be a little harder for them to make that trade. But, I mean, we could we could try. We could try. Um, it's actually closer in value than I thought. Um, let's go with uh, that Marchand... And um, let's take a look at our picks here. I don't usually like moving picks that much, but we do have three third round picks this year. So we might be able to move one of these to, you know, make it worthwhile. It's maybe Phillies. That's actually pretty close trade value, to be honest. And we'd be getting younger with someone like Marchand. Um, a player, though, that... Let me look at this real quick. There is a player, though, that I like of them who's a little younger. <clears throat> Might have a little more top-end talent, and that is Riley Smith. Um, he looks like he's going to be a very good player for years to come. Um, and he's the type of guy who I'd love to have on my team. So, 
what we're going to do is we're going to try to make that trade. I'm going to go after Riley Smith instead. Um, let me see if someone else fits that better than Hartnell. Even if we did have to have Riley Smith on the third line at first, he'd eventually get into the first line or second line because, I mean, that's just kind of what's going to happen. And, I mean, looking at the team, with Scott Hartnell being a 32-year-old player, you know, he's going to start getting worse very soon. Um, so he's probably the best guy to move at the moment, though we also could move Horton, even though he's having a great season. Uh, I'd, I'd probably like to keep him at the moment. So let's use Hartnell here and uh, see what we can do. Hartnell and a third-round pick for Riley Smith, who doesn't make very much money at the moment. But um, well, actually what we'll do is we'll... I think we'll hold a little bit of the salary here, which is a nice addition that they added to the uh, GM mode this year. What we're going to do is we're going to hold a million dollars of his salary. That's what's going to retain. What, yeah, what we're going to retain. That way it helps them with their um, salary issues as well. So we're going to do that. <clears throat> Might make things a little better for them. Um... Yeah, so that looks like a pretty good trade there. Let's uh, make that. Let's propose that trade. All right, they'll take the trade. Welcome Riley Smith to our organization. That will allow me to put Felino back on the left wing, and put Riley Smith on the right wing. A good trade, I would say, for our team. We'll take a look at Carolina. Um, a couple people had mentioned um, Anton Kudobin as a good back up goalie. Um. I don't, I don't, you know, disagree with that. He could be a very good backup goalie. However, his trade value still might be just a bit much. Um, let me look into a few other teams who might have a good backup goalie as well. You could look at like Kari Ramo there. Not bad, not a bad backup. Though right now he is their starter, so they may not want to trade him as much. Um, <clears throat> look at Antti Ranta. He's still, you know, got years to go to get better, but that's all right. Um, who does? The teams. We can look at the uh, monster, Gustafson, as well as Merzak. Merzak, Merzak, Muzik. Ah, I can't talk. Either of those guys would be good. Actually, you know what? I think, considering his age and salary and everything else, he only has one year left. Gustafson's probably a good guy to bring over as a backup goalie. So what we'll do is we're going to move McElhaney back because we don't need any more goalies than what we have. Um, and we just should add maybe a pick or... Um, let's see here. We'll move... What skaters are matching their block? It's all top end defensemen. Basically, all of our starting defensemen. Hmm. I don't really think I want to move any of those guys. Um, let's take a look at the draft picks here. They seem to like third round picks, though. So, I think I'll use my, my other extra third round pick the Los Angeles Kings had given us, which I believe was part of the, um, the Gabrick trade. And uh, McElhaney in a third for Gustafson. Seems like a winning deal for us at the end of the day. So I'll go ahead and give that a try. Um, hmm. Doesn't thrill it, but they could have. Yeah, that's true. They don't really want McElhaney, which is understandable, I guess. Um, <clears throat> let's see what we can do here then. Um, is there any goalies matching their block? Nope. So. I really want to get rid of a goalie along with getting a goalie. So, what we'll do is let's see if they want Merzlikens instead. He is he's a young guy. Whoops. Um. No, I don't. I don't. I don't need that. So I want to look at his. I hit the wrong button. Not what I meant to do. <laughs> I 
So yeah, let's take a look at Merlikens here. He was our third round pick this year. Um, he has a great name. His name is Elvis, like that. 20 years old. He's actually he's got pretty good size and everything else. Um, look at him compared to McElhaney here. Hmm. Shoot. I obviously I don't want to move Dance because I think Dance could be another starting type goaltender soon. And he could be a damn good backup in about one or two seasons, I would think. So what we're going to do is we're going to put... McElhaney is still going to be there. What I'll do is I'll try to sweeten the pot a little bit with a late, late pick. So like a seventh rounder, maybe. Uh, we'll go with our seventh rounder. And see if they like that better. All right. They accepted the trade. Welcome Jonas Gustafsson, the monster, to our team now. Um, was there anything else that I really felt like we needed to fix on our team when it comes to, you know, what we're, what we're not so good at? Oh, yeah. I, I think we need a, um, a defenseman who is a good veteran. Um, if you look at our team here, we have a lot of good young players, but we don't have a ton of, um, great veteran type players. Of course, Wisniewski and Tootin are two really good veterans on the back end along with Johnson, but I think I need someone to round up that top six that can really help us in the end. Um, and usually on these games, um, that's actually somewhat cheap. Like if you look down at some of these defensemen that they want to move, you can get them pretty cheap. I mean, they're usually down here where you can get them for like a lower end pick even. So, um, why is Murphy down that low? That's that's surprising, to be honest. Connor Murphy. Because he could be a damn good player eventually, and I feel like he will. Um, let's see who's down here. Well, you know what? It would probably help if I just looked at defenseman, right? Didn't even think of that at first. So, McCulloch is always a good defenseman, but I don't know. Um, Schlemko. It's an idea. Not quite the uh, guys I was hoping would be there, though. That's all right. Let's take a look at uh, Anaheim. Lindholm, Hampus, good old Hampus. Uh, Mazaros, he's a he's a good defenseman. Allen, Lovejoy, Surrey, Fistrick. They have a they have a stockpile of of defensemen, but I'm looking for someone a little better, a little better than that. Take a look at Washington, who should be defensive heavy after this past year's free agency. Carlson, Green, Alsner, Niskanen. We have Orpik and Orlov. What's Orpik look like? Ooh, that's a big salary. Yeah, that's that's not gonna work. Take a look at Winnie Peg. Hmm. Oh, Mark Stewart. I like Mark Stewart. He's a good defenseman. Or bring him back Grant Klitsum. That's another idea, too. I like. I kind of like that idea, actually. Well, Grant Klitsum. One-way, two-year contract still. Stewart's got four years and uh, makes a little more. So I think I might like... Let's, let's try to bring back Grant Klitsum. He seems like a, a good addition for us here. Um... Let's see here. Skaters matching the block. What are they looking for? So it's basically younger players is what they're looking for. Heatherington is a guy that they're looking for. Um, Erickson, obviously. Motri. Czar. Bowler. Um, let's see here. I think, see, Hetherington could end up being pretty good, to be honest. I think he'll be good in the end. Um, so I don't really want to move him or Bjorkstrand. Both of those guys are two of our younger players who are coming up. Motri. He could, eh. He could end up becoming pretty damn good, too. It's kind of a grinder, though. So you don't really know what you're going to get with that. Daniel Zarr. 
So what we'll do, since it's saying it's high for a bottom six forward, that's not quite as important as what it could be. So what we're going to do is we're going to move Moultrie, Mo or Moultrie, not Moultrie, what am I talking about? And we're going to add, just to sweeten it a little bit, try to add a seventh round pick here from Toronto and see if that goes through. All right, they accepted our trade offer. So we brought in Grant Klitsum, another player who we might want to bring in. Um, just to take a look at him, is uh, one of the players that we brought in in, in you know the real life, Mr. Uh, Leopold, I believe. Yeah, I think that he plays for them. Yeah, so Jordan Leopold, 81 overall, 34 years old. A very good, dependable defenseman. Um, yeah, salary is a bit much, but that's all right. But at the same time, you know what? Even with we have now Tim Erickson as an extra defenseman, and Prout can be sent down. So because of that, I think we can we can live without getting someone like Leopold or another you know older defenseman. Um, we're going to back out of this real quick and just take a look at our lines. We will have to keep in mind that, um, that someone like a Brandon Dubinsky will be back by the playoff time. So we don't, we obviously don't want to fill his position and pay too much just because he's out for that prolonged amount of time. But, uh, let's see here. We'll do a quick swap with these two so they can play their actual positions. Yeah, so now you, you look at the new look second line there with Felino, Jenner, and Smith. For now, of course, Dubinsky will be there on the second line when he gets back. Calvert, Atkinson, Latestu, a good line. Um, the fourth line, eh, I mean, we we probably could use a you know another good like older center maybe, but. Uh, I'm not sure who we'd go after, to be honest. I mean, usually it's like someone who's like really good on faceoffs and everything else. You know what? Let's let's take a look at something here. Um, might try to bring back another player from last year's successful team. I just don't know how much he'll cost. I know he got a bigger contract elsewhere, but I don't know how much he'll cost us salary-wise and trade value-wise. We need to go to the Florida Panthers. Good old DMAC is what we're looking for. So let's see here. Keep it going, keep going. Alright, DMAC. It's only a 79 overall. However, it's a very good. Well, hold on, let me look at his stats real quick. Um, it's a very good 79 overall. I know from playing with him on prior games as well, he actually plays pretty well on the game as well. Um,. So depth forward, good discipline, you know, he's decent offensive stats, but that's not what we brought him in for, you know. Body checking is good, his strength, defensive awareness. I figured his defensive awareness could be a little higher, but that's all right. Um, shot blocking and stick checking, all that stuff. Face-offs, pretty good. I expected that to be a little better as well. Um, let's see if we can bring back D-Mac. Good old Derek McKenzie. We should be out again for pretty cheap. Which is important because, uh, because, yeah. <laughs> Let's take a look down here. So we'll move him for. Let's go with, uh. Hmm. The Amigo's still got some. He's still got some youth. Maybe, uh, Sean Collins? Maybe? He's one of those players who's always, he's been called up quite a bit, but he's never really been able to come in and, you know, do a whole lot. So, try to move, um, try to move Sean Collins and maybe, let's see here. Hmm. We'll move him and hmm. 
What do we have down here? Frederick Saint Denis. Seems legit. I think that gives him a little more value. Let's try that. They're neutral. They don't really like. Um. Is there a later pick I can give him? Well, I'll give him the sixth round pick. Because honestly, you don't really get a whole lot in the later rounds anyway. So, do that. We're just trying to make this team ready for a playoff run. So. Eh, well, they don't like that either. Hmm. Let's go ahead and uh, try to see what sort of... Um, is there any goalies that's matching their block? Okay, so all the young guys. Let's give him Corpusalo. I mean, not that Corpusalo is bad, but, but I don't think he'll become as much as he could become. And we're going to go ahead and remove that six-round pick. And, uh, yeah. Let's propose the trade. Really? Not off base. So I guess we'll add that draft pick back then and see what happens. Actually, you know what? No. What we're going to do is we're going to add him. We're going to give him a seventh pick for na for next year. Good old seven rounder. The seventh round, you definitely don't get good stuff. Really? Man, who would have thought that the Derek McKenzie trade would be the hardest one to make? You know what? Eh, you know, it's not it's it's not that important. That's okay. You know what? I think to be honest, I think that might end our um, trade deadline for this season at least. I'm going to go ahead and simulate these last few games so that you guys can see that and it'll set us up for the next week of games afterwards here so let me go ahead and simulate up to that day it's going to say hey do you want to do these trades probably and we'll take a look at them but um, I already looked at the trade deadline oh and it's got assignment so many things so many things so for some reason they this thing hasn't seen McDavid or something which is weird we're gonna do forwards in the OHL again because McDavid should be someone who we we pin, and then we try to make a you know make a run for him here, the trade deadline, or not trade deadline. What am I talking about? The draft. So we're able to beat Washington. The trade deadline has passed. Maybe the uh, simulation will go a little quicker now. Get over with these uh, New Jersey and Colorado games here. So everything is so tight right now in the Metro Division. It's ridiculous. It really is. A win, two wins. There you go. Three wins in a row there to end off the week. That's what I'm talking about. That's what we need. All right, so as you can see, for the next two weeks, we have Carolina, Detroit, Edmonton, uh, Vancouver, and Calgary. If there's a certain one of the games that you want me to play when it comes to Carolina or Edmonton, let me know. It probably won't matter no, no matter what. Um, if I have to play any team, I'm going to probably lean towards Vancouver or Calgary myself or even Edmonton, whatever. Um, I'll probably decide that day, unless, of course, you guys give me ideas and tell me what you want me to play, or who you want me to play. So, that concludes this episode. We'd, uh, have to, we have to welcome our newest additions to our team. Um, Riley Smith is going to be a great addition going forward, I believe. Um, you know, bringing in someone like Grant Klitsum once again was a good move because we were able to get a defenseman who has proven to round out the top six and take Erickson's spot for now, at least until next season probably. Um, and yeah, and then we got Gustafson as a good backup goaltender. To be honest, I'm really happy with, with what we were able to do. Nothing big, but at the end of the day, we didn't have to make any big changes because the team's already looking pretty good, as you can see. So... I will see you all next time. Sorry about the uh, l length of the video, but I wanted to be able to get this all into one video instead of making it two itself. So, yeah. I will see you all once again when we fire the cannon. Goodbye.